I'm Judy Schwanz, and I want to welcome you to this lesson from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. The writer of this passage lists 14 pairs of opposites. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's a pretty comprehensive one of the varied experiences of our lives. The consistent message is that there is a time for each one of these and that God will make all things beautiful in God's time. You can't live long on this earth before learning that you have to take the good with the bad and that there are seasons in life. Some things are literally seasonal, winter, spring, summer, fall, school calendars, farming or gardening seasons, sports, even TV schedules follow a calendar. We become accustomed to those patterns and they become habit for us. Graduates often come back to us at the seminary and say, it's September and I feel like I ought to be in class. I was so excited to be done, but now that it's September, it feels wrong not to be taking another class. For many people in the world, however, this time of global pandemic has disrupted those kind of cycles, or at least has made them look very different. And it's disconcerting for us. Sometimes, things come as life cycle seasons. I've often talked to young parents who feel guilty because they don't have time for the devotional life that they experienced before they had children. And I try to encourage them that it's a season. This will not last forever. Diapers go away, toddlers grow up, and uh, life changes and seasons change. I try to encourage them that they are in the midst of a season. Childhood, teenage years, college age, launching of our children, the empty nest, adult years, retirement, many of these are marked with firsts and with lasts. God says that there is a season for each one of them. Again, in this time of global pandemic, a lot of those first and last markers have been messed up. And often what we've heard people say is, I missed my graduation, I missed my prom, I missed this event, I missed that event. Seasons are deceptive. That brings us to the fact that some seasons are situational, and our world will likely remember 2020, 2021 as a season of isolation and or disruption because of COVID-19. You may hear someone also speak about a season of grief in their life, a time when it seems as if the losses pile up and they threaten to overwhelm. Many times, though, those seasons of loss coincide with seasons of new life. We had a young woman graduate from seminary, go to her first assignment as an associate pastor. Shortly after she arrived, her pastor departed for a brief family vacation, and he left her alone in the office. As is not surprising, the first day she had the crucible of fire, and she had that phone call from a parishioner that said her husband had been in an accident, the parishioner's husband had been in an accident, and um, there was an emergency. Could she rush to the hospital? And as she did, she arrived to discover that the parishioner had died. She ministered to the grieving family that day, returned to the church office only to receive a call that a young family had gone into labor, and she was called back to that very same hospital to celebrate with that family that evening a newborn life. Seasons are a natural, normal part of human reality. The good, like new life, is made even more sweet when we've also tasted the pain of the loss. God makes all things beautiful in God's time, and in all seasons, God is with us.